Green terrace, loggia, or a balcony can be a continuation of an apartment. Rest amongst greenery is more effective. The air cleaner and you can hide from the sun when it's too hot. What to do to achieve best results? I recommend planting at the beginning of the season, in the second half of March or in April. At this moment, climbers start growing and become a decoration in the same vegetative season. The plants can be later trained upwards along freestanding supports or supports attached to a wall, for example trellises. On one balcony or in the same container, different cultivars can be teamed. Planting can take place not only in spring, but also in summer or early autumn. For instance, when we want to replace the cultivars that ceased blooming, or we've acquired new, more attractive plants, or simply when rearranging the space. As plants are bought in small, two-litre containers, we can transplant them to their destined bigger pots throughout the season. I'm going to show you how to plant these climbers to make the terrace green right away. A similar planting method is used in spring. Only then the plant will be leafless or with leaves that are just developing. When you plant in summer, you can choose plants in bloom or in bud to achieve the immediate decorative effect. I've got a terracotta pot of reddish hue, so I'm going to choose clematis of similar colouring. This is Viva Polonia cultivar, which together with the white flowering Jerzy Popiewuszko create a composition in Polish national colours. These belong to the early large flowered group. It's better not to combine clematis or different groups like early or late flowered ones as they're pruned differently. Patrizia is going to plant Krakowiak or Viticella group here, as well as late flowered group, Morning Sky and scented Sweet Summer Love, a Flamula group. All of them have red or pink toned flowers and are strong growing, up to three meters. So a solid support will be necessary. These free cultivars require pruning in spring at around 30 to 40 centimeters height. These are cut back higher. How to plant the climbers? First, I place some soil at the bottom to cover the big drainage holes. Then I add drainage. We have fine rubble here. We can also use gravelite or gravel instead. I even up the surface. Now I spread a piece of mesh to separate the drainage layer from the soil. This is not necessary, but allows the plant to benefit from the drainage for longer. Only then I put the soil in the pot. What sort of soil to use? It should be organic and of good physical properties, that is, retaining water and providing air access at the same time. There's no point saving money on that. Better to buy a good quality product that will last longer. Here we have a mix of high quality peat and perlite, mulch and a small amount of decomposed manure that's been composted with bark for two to three years. Even such well rotted manure shouldn't be added too generously or it'll burn the roots. The substrate should be 5.5 pH. Large flowered clematis of viticella group just as flamula or texensis cultivars should be planted five centimeters deeper than they were before. The plants have been soaked for 10 minutes in a bucket of water to ensure maximum water absorption before transplanting. This is very important, as the shop-bought plants are often too dry. In such a container, one plant can be potted, but then will have to wait for the effect longer. I'm going to plant free. Those who need fast results or want to combine more colors can plant as many as four or five. It's important to plant robust specimens bought in at least two liter containers. Also plants in half liter or liter containers are available, but they're too small to be used by amateurs. Those are young specimens to be transplanted to two liter or larger containers when still in a nursery and only then sold. We should buy plants in two liter containers minimum. 
With a developed root system and at least two base shoots that are a good foundation for a healthy, robust plant. This is white flowering Jerzy Popiewuszko. I'm going to plant it at the front. Viva Polonia, which is red with a white bar across, will go behind it. Jerzy Popiewuszko reaches about 1.2 to 1.4 meters, and Viva Polonia grows higher to 1.5 to 1.8 meters. It's important to acquire your plants from a good source. I recommend climbers from our nursery Clematis, the source of good climbers, which have this trademark and all our plants have it on their label. These are worth looking for in garden shops and centers. I fill the pot with the soil. I lightly stir my hand through the soil to get rid of any air pockets. But I don't knead too hard or it'll get too thick and won't let the air in. We leave a couple of centimeters empty at the top to make sure the water doesn't escape the container during watering. For these plants we need to install a support. There are different kinds of supports, for example, this one homemade, of three to four bamboo sticks bought at a garden center. We stick them in the ground. These are 1.5 meters long. I'm going to use four of them. I even them up so they look right and then I tie them with a piece of string or wire so they stay together. This is a good construction, cheap and simple. Each element of this support is thin enough for the leap petiolas to twine around and climb up. Such a support can be higher if needed, but for these plants is sufficient. You can also buy ready-made bamboo supports like those Patrizia's used. I prefer metal supports. We have here a nice trellis of wrought iron that is itself an ornament. As we used such a decorative pot, it's only right to add a nice support like this one. I'm going to put it in from above and place the plants inside. I have to be careful to not damage the shoots or flowers. Of course, if we plant clematis in spring, we won't have any flowers yet and the shoots will be leafless. I'm going to make it stable. Don't worry that the bars are visible now. They'll soon be covered by twining shoots and leaves spreading to the sides. As soon as the plant catches onto the new support, the small bamboo sticks that were used in the nursery can be cut into pieces with a secateur and delicately pulled out of the tangle. We water the transplanted clematis. This is very important. At the beginning, before the roots penetrate the substrate, the watering should be moderate and occasional. We need to check the soil humidity regularly. After the plants covered the support with shoots and leaves, it needs to be watered every day or every other day, especially on sunny days. By no means leave vines in containers for a week or two without watering, especially in hot weather. The neighbors could help you out, or you need to install an automatic watering system. A pipe leading to the pot or an adjuster will be sufficient. These sort of devices are now available and not too costly. The remaining work will consist of pruning in spring, according to the general rules that I've presented in another tutorial. Fertilizing. It is best to fertilize vines with slow-release fertilizers, like Osmocote, five to six months. According to the instruction, this should be done once a season in the second half of April or at the beginning of May at the latest. Alternatively, fluid fertilizer can be used once or twice a week from the beginning of the vegetation period till summer. Granulates can be applied too. 
Never overdose fertilizer as it's not plant food but salt, which raises the soil salinity. Clematis don't like salty soil. Fertilizers improve their growth but they can be harmful when overdosed. In autumn, container plants need freeze protection if they weren't insulated before. This procedure has been presented in another tutorial. What cultivars to choose? The decision should be made depending on our expectations and desired results. Here, I wanted to plant a smallish vine, not higher than 1.5 to 1.7 meters, so that I could move around the terrace. The president, Multi Blue, Hania, Yulka will be great for this purpose, as well as many others. On our website www.clematis.com.pl, you'll find a recommended application in every cultivar description. If you'd like to create a 2 to 3 meters high green wall on a trellis, I recommend strong growing clematis of viticella or late large flowered group like Skyfall, Jack Manny, Comtesse de Bouchard and many others. It's a good idea to add a scented cultivar to our composition. Sweet Summer Love, that Patriciads planted here, is one of them. But one of the most fragrant cultivars is Clematis Manchurica. It's a perennial vine that needs to be tied to supports, reaches 2 to 3 meters height and is covered with small, white, strongly scented flowers for 5 to 6 weeks in season. It may be worth saving one container for this cultivar and place it near the window or by a coffee table on the balcony or terrace. We can see climbers here that have also created green walls. These containers aren't big enough. They should be two to three times larger. Big plants in small containers require frequent and copious watering. But we can also use smaller containers, like those Patrizia's got. This pot is perfect for planting perennial clematis. I'm going to plant one that'll climb a support. This is the president that reaches 1.5 meters height. While the president will climb upwards, Hakuri, the low growing cultivar, will cover the sides. Not only does it have beautiful flowers, but they're also fragrant. I'm going to complement this composition with common periwinkle illumination. It's going to match perfectly the strong colouring of the president and it'll add a yellow accent to the arrangement. The illumination cultivar produces exceptionally long shoots that look pretty also when overhanging. That means you can plant them in hanging baskets and let them flow down. Here they'll reach the ground covering the container. It's possible to live among greenery and flowers even in the city centre, even on the high floor of an apartment block. It's certainly healthier and not that difficult to arrange.